hello everyone in the previous video we discussed about the body organization that is the cellular level of organization the protoplasmic level of organization and all these and in this video we are going to discuss about the germ layers okay so germ layers is something which is exclusively in case of animals why because germ layers is what uh, what is we find when an a zygote develops into uh, embryo or it develops into a fetus and then it becomes an organism okay so that's an intermediate step intermediate intermediate stage we find in animals only that is germ layers in plants what happens is something like this you can see over here that is the embryo develops like this forming a globular embryo the heart shaped embryo and then maturing like this so it doesn't form any germ layers and in case of fungi also the case uh, means this is similar to like that similar to that of plants now there is two terms over here the diploblast and the triploblast when the zygote starts dividing itself we find and uh, we very f at the beginning find uh, something like this so imagine that this layer this is a layer of cells so cells are arranged in a circular manner like that and it is actually not circular it is a spherical manner okay so it is a cross section of a sphere so it appears to be a circle and then we have another layer of cell in inside it and separating those two layers of cell is a non living layer and inside this layer means inside the uh, endoderm which is called endoderm inside the layer inside is called endoderm and inside the endoderm is the digestive cavity okay or the gut now this is the very primitive type of organization now what happens is that the ectoderm that is the outside the layer in the outermost layer that that invaginates inside so if it invaginates inside and it just forms another layer that you can see over here called the mesoderm so now this is the gut and this the uh, this is the lining of the gut so the lining of the stomach the lining of the intestines is intestines all are formed by the layer of cells which we see in the endoderm okay and then we have the ectoderm which forms the outer skin okay and this layer you can see inside is just a non living layer or it composes of spicules or anything like that which is secreted by these cells when the mesoderm uh, and in case of the diploblastic organisms we find there is no separation or between the gut and the outermost skin or the gut and the gut wall is there and the next layer we find is the outermost skin like in case of porifera and hydra okay and here we have a triploblast so we are uh, in case of us we don't have just a gut wall and uh, just a gut the gut wall and the uh, skin right we have so many organs and all those organs come from this layer this very important layer the mesoderm okay so mesoderm actually differentiates and then this is the stage after which gastro uh, gastrulation occurs and the cell starts moving here and there and this mesoderm cells form what is between our skin and our gut wall that is all the organs so that is formed by the mesoderm and this type of organiz organization is ca in case of the platyhelminths or the flatworms now is as as if you have if you know a little bit about the flatworms you will know that there are layers between the gut wall or the endoderm and the ectoderm but there is no cavity that's why they appear to be flat okay like a piece of paper so that cavity develops due to the coelom development of a coelom so you here you can see the mesoderm develops as a result of invagination of the ectoderm an increase in germ layer so that they are getting more and more specialized as we talked in the 
pre as we discussed in the previous video uh, the case of development is actually uh, getting more and more specialized so increase in the germ layers is actually indicating the increase in the specialization that is increase in the complexity that is the tissue level and organ level of classification okay and now we'll start the formation of the coelom okay now let us talk about the coelom what is a coelom a true coelom is a fluid filled body cavity that is completely lined by the tissue created by the mesoderm the middle layer of the primary cells is found in the embryo okay so what happens is that if it is a true coelom which will take a further while to develop but if it is a true coelom there is uh, it is a cavity in the mesoderm in between the mesoderm which is lined by the cells of the coelom so let us uh, uh, see it or let us let me try to explain it more detail so this is what i was talking about so this is uh, like this the cells are arranged and they form a layer and this is actually a cross section of a sphere so i can draw any 3d diagram over here but this is how the cells are arranged and you can visualize it in 3d and that forms the ectoderm and this forms the endoderm now what will happen is that invagination so as you can see over here the ectoderm is invaginating inside and it will the process will continue and a new germ layer will form that is the mesoderm so as the cells keep on dividing so you can see a new layer that is the mesoderm has been formed over here so let me label this layer so the, this is the mesoderm now an interesting discovery at this stage it is that a cavity is actually formed just now after this a cavi um, the mesodermal cells m start moving towards the ectoderm okay so this just starts shifting towards the ectoderm and then a cavity is formed over here this one so this cavity between the mesoderm layer and the endoderm layer so this cavity is is like a coelom but it is not a coelom because the definition of a coelom is that it should be surrounded by mesodermal cells and this is a uh, endoderm so you can see over here one side is mesodermal and the other side this side is the endodermal so this is not a true coelom but this is a pseudo coelom okay so what we have here is the diploblastic that is found in platyhel uh, sorry that is found in sponges that is porifera and cilentrates and nidaria all those then we have the platyhelminthes that contains the diploblastic oh sorry platyhelminthes contains triploblastic and acelomate type of uh, organization that means at that stage at the stage of platyhelminthes we don't have this mesodermal cells shifting towards the ectoderm so therefore there is no such coelom only uh, three layers of cells and that's why they are flat now in case of the round worms that is the nematodes okay we find that the cells shift towards the ectoderm and then we find a pseudo coelom though it is not a true coelom i find the development of a pseudo coelom so that was pseudo coelom now let's move on further and find the stage where we find a true coelom okay so here we go okay so we discussed these now so you can see platyhelminthes are acelomate nematode are pseudo coelomate now annelids arthropods and mollusks are schizo coelomate so what do i mean by this and over here you can see enterocelomate that is the true coelom so then what is this schizo coelomate so let us look at this diagram to understand so here it will explain better so that is that this side you can see over here this side is the development of the schizo coelom okay and this side is the development of the entero coelom schizo coelom actually develops due to a split in the mesodermal cells okay now let me again switch to paint to explain it better 
So this is what happens. This coelom is formed all right, but the cells are not stopping to divide, right? Because it is forming a very complex multicellular structure. So the cells have to keep on dividing to form more and more cells to grow into that organism that the, uh, the zygote is destined to grow. So therefore, the mesoderman cells keep on dividing and gradually they fill up this pseudocelom after all. Okay, so they fill up the pseudocelom. So as you can see over here, they have filled the uh, pseudocelom that was formed and therefore I remove the label of the pseudocelom over here. It is not there now. Now, there was a pseudocelom. Okay, so if there was a pseudocelom, the coelom, what is the, what is inside the coelom is a fluid called the coelomic fluid and this fluid is secreted by the cells surrounding the coelom. So the pseudocelom too contained such a fluid and when the cells started dividing this such rapidly and filled up this the cells filled up this area of the pseudocelom then where will the fluid go and like all fluids the fluid has to go somewhere and it will what happen it will create a split between this multi-layered mesoderm and what will happen next is something like this so I just removed those cells and just replaced it by lines and now till now you must be able to visualize that these lines are actually cells okay so cells are there like in that picture there were cells so these cells are aligned like that throughout this line okay so like that this mesoderm has become multiple layered and you can see this silomic fluid has accumulated over here in the mesodermal between the mesodermal layers so this coelom this coelom is called a schizocelom okay this is a this is a schizocelom now you may argue that why is it not a true coelom okay we it is surrounded it is a coelom all right between the ectoderm and endoderm and it is surrounded by mesodermal cells only and the argument is just vain because it is a true coelom and but it is just not found in most developed organisms it is not what ha occurs in most developed organisms like the chordates, echinoderms it is not what occurs but it is a true coelom there's another form of true coelom which actually occurs in the developed organism this type of schizocelom occurs in organisms like you can see over here organisms like the annelids the arthropods and the mollusks so these organisms possess the schizocelom but from the echinodermata the the cells start moving more and the coelom takes a different place and the coelom is then actually formed by the mesodermal pouches as you can see over here there are mesodermal pouches which are developing over here and this is forming the enterocelom the coelom which is true coelom all right but it is possessed by the most developed organisms and even us okay so that is an enterocelom and that is an enterocelom so we discussed about the uh, germ layers and the coelom in this video hope you like the video and please like comment and subscribe and in the next video we are going to discuss about what we see uh, protostomia and deuterostomia so we are going to discuss about the differences okay so thanks for watching bye